what is the educational importance of the HPE learning area? Firstly, the current health and physical education uses a strength-based approach, which means every student has strengths and resources that can be neutral to improve their own and other health and well-being. Thus, students will have a positive attitude on taking responsibility about their health. A future-oriented HPE would provide students factual knowledge and research tools. Therefore, students can take an inquiry-based approach, use their critical thinking skills to solve problems, and set health management plans to optimize their health lifelong skills. This inquiry-based approach can also provide opportunities for students to improve their health literacy and become lifelong critical consumers of health-related information with the skills to access, appraise, and apply health-related knowledge. On the other hand, regular and high-quality education about movement can stimulate the high participation in body exercise and recreational sports. Thus, regular exercise can reduce the likelihood of chronic disease. NHGE contributes the goal of health, Health Australia. What are some considerations when selecting and using health education resources in my teaching? For personal, social, and community health, I will consider to choose resources such as factual knowledge and research tools that can help students take a critical inquiry approach and discuss how context might influence choices, rather than resources mainly identify poor behaviors. For example, in a health eating class, instead of providing reading materials which identify the behavior of not taking enough fruits and vegetables as a negative behavior, I can support students to investigate where does food come from, how food can be sorted in different groups, what are the sources of six major nutrients, what is the government's guide of healthy eating, Students' critical thinking skills and health literacy can be developed from these activities, and they will make wiser choices of their lifestyles in the future. Moreover, as the prevalent mass media tend to portray their unrealistic expectation of body image, and it causes significant health issues such as anorexia, I should also consider commercial interests as a significant cultural player on shaping students' health choices and take a similar approach, which is inquiry-based approach, to help students understand how media tests work to construct social values and help students make better decisions. As for movement skills, firstly, I will select the materials that explain the key points of the fundamental motor skills, such as catch, run, kick, bounce the ball. Thus, I can take a teacher-directed approach to introduce the fundamental motor skills to students. Secondly, I will take the teaching games for understanding module choose both traditional and creative games from the categories of invasion games, striking, field, building, net court, and target, and understand the techniques or skills under the games. However, when students play the game, the focus should be the game rather than decontextualized techniques or skills. Students' learning is located in and developed from games. Finally, the non-educative aspirations of movements, such as teaching sports to increase schools' internationally, nationally competitive performance or improve students' health measures, such as BMI, negatively influenced students' engagement in movement-related activities. To engage all students, especially girls, 
students from a different cultural background, and students with special needs into movement activities. I should also address a strength-based approach and plan movement activities that shoots different individuals, different body, and different cultures. How do students learn in, about, and through movement? Learning, learning in movement focuses on the acquisition and refinement of broad range of movement skills. For example, when students started to learn how to play basketball, the first thing they should learn is the techniques the techniques of bouncing a ball, such as keeping looking forward, contacting the ball with fingers from one hand at about hip height, pushing the ball with wrist, bending elbows, then straightening, then straightening, and slightly flexing hips and knees during the bounce. Learning about movement is about developing knowledge and understanding about how our body moves, why we move our body in particular ways, and what happens to our body when it moves, and with whom we move. It covers knowledge of subdisciplines such as anatomy, physiology, sociology, and biomechanics. For example, any exercise that involves using a person's abnormal and back muscles together counts as a core exercise, such as push-up. A group of core exercises may ease a person's back pain by strengthening the core muscles around the person's truck, stomach, back, and the pelvis. Learning through movement focuses on the personal and social skills that can be developed through participation in movement and physical activities. For example, children can improve their communication skills, strengthen their confidence and self-worth, self -worth, and get a sense of being able to work well with others through playing soccer games. How does your unit plan development demonstrate your proficiency or developing proficiency in one of the graduate APTAs? In the unit plan, I demonstrated my developing proficiency on planning and implementing effective teaching and learning based on content descriptors on Victorian curriculum. I collaboratively I collaboratively worked with my group members to plan structure and sequence learning group for grade one to two children. And the topic is about help children understand their identity, understand the multiple representation of emotion, and express themselves safely and respectfully in the classroom environment. We plan to use a wide range of teaching strategies, such as teacher-directed questioning and discussion, observation-based exploration, as well as student-centered and inquiry-based group discussion. As for classroom interaction, we try to change the abstract concepts, such as identity, to concrete facts. For example, to explain culture is part of the identity. I try to help students explore what are the differences in lives between the people in the city and people in remote Aboriginal area. We selected a lot of facial arts such as videos, board game, picture cards, and body therometer to facilitate students to think, to think concretely. Also, I designed an assessment task which requires children to create a play about a conflict in school. However, my group members pointed out that this task is beyond students' current level and they suggested to describe they suggested me to design several scenarios and students only need to elaborate these scenarios. I think this is a really helpful suggestion and I changed my planning.